Thomas the Hermit, the um, fifth day, second part, the last part, it's time to sum up what we have done and where we are at and for me to exhort you and to give you a little bit more advice about prayer. Well, to sum it up, we started the first day. We looked at God as being one. I am who am. What um, God said to Abraham in the burning bush. Um, then we looked at um, this incredible relationship between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and the love that is there. Then we looked at God's infinity, that He is outside of time, that um, He has always existed and will always exist. And the last one was that God loved us first and that any merit that we have of, of we think that we're seeking him is him actually drawing us to himself. Jesus said that he is in the Father, that's the elucidation to the Holy Trinity, and that we are in him and he is in us. We are in Him, and He is in us. That is the signpost of the direction to go. When He is drawing you to Himself, you seeking that intimate union, like the Holy Trinity has with itself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a perfection of love, and us invited to be a part with that perfection of love. That is the basics of contemplation. Pursue it. There is nothing more enlightening, more revealing of the truth than to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to him. To be like Mary and to sit. And there's a need for Marys. There's a great need for lay people to become a part of the, the prayer of the church as a sacrifice for the church. There's a great need. You don't have to become a nun. You don't have to become a brother to be a part of the great prayer of Jesus for the world. You can also be a part of that. I am a part of that, and you also can be a part of that prayer. Now, a warning. The demonic does not want real prayer warriors, and it doesn't want you praying. So you will not find an advocate but an enemy in the liar. And he is a liar. That's all he does is lie. That's his main weapon of choice, is to create lies. Therefore, do two things. This is my recommendation to you. When you pray, pray in front of the most holy, blessed sacrament, his body that is in either a tabernacle that is closed or is in a monstrance so that you can sit and pray there in safety and peace. 
if you this is not available to you or it is not it, it, you, it is too difficult to make that happen then start with the scriptures use the scriptures use the Bible the Song of Songs and the Psalms are very excellent for the contemplative also very excellent is the first chapter of John where it says in the beginning was the word very excellent also I recommend Job if you have had a lot of suffering and difficulties in your life or lamentations all of these are great meditational pieces and works whereby they will help you and to stabilize you and are a safe road when you're on the path of contemplation. Do not be misled by the liar. The liar will try to seduce you into your spiritual importance and that is called spiritual pride. If you become spiritually important you will begin to believe every little fantasy or imagination that has been thrust upon you by the liar. And you will begin to believe that you are an important savior yourself. Well, there is one savior. His name is Jesus Christ. Only one. And on top of that topic, I want to say to you also this, being obedient to Mother Church is your protection against the vain pride of spiritual pride. Practice your prayers. Seek the Lord. When you feel drawn, draw near to Him and He will draw near to you. This is Thomas the Hermit. Say a prayer for me. I'm praying for you. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe to my channel. I've got a lifetime of experience to share, and God bless you.